And this does actually leave Kenny very isolated on quad all by his lonesome. Yeah, I mean, look how easy it is to just take mid control, especially on the pistol round. You apply just a little bit of pressure, and Shox doesn't want to commit to that fight. Long way for him to fall back, and JR's so close. There's the shadow showing. One tap from Shox, and now the offense. It's not finding any success. Kenny in the bomb site. Oh, oh he's answering our questions now. We doubted him. It always felt like he was overshadowed when Mir was around, but now that Mir's no longer here, Chopper is one of the main guys. He's like the talisman. Meanwhile, for Mass, not gonna happen. Speak of the devil, Chopper comes in, body flicking across to the airborne crush. This is where the lack of armor is gonna be a sting, and body, and he's just gonna spray them all down one by one. I was gonna say, just that armor against that SMG, there's, there's just no joy there for Chopper with that AK-47. Still a great job by Body. Another kill that he's adding on to it. That's four for him total in the round. If JR can add anything to it. Low HP, even though he does have armor, it's not gonna matter a whole lot. There's Lucky. Three players over on the A side. Completely giving up mid control. At some point, that's gonna be in the back of their minds. I think they're just starting to realize that mid is potentially an issue. Now Kenny S with his AK picks up his fifth kill of the game. Four, of course, coming in the pistol, but he has been silenced. He's been squashed, and this is allowing Vega to make inroads through the highway side. Lucky, close range with the MP9. No longer going to have an armorless squad against him, but still able to get two. And Hudgy with eight seconds left, going to go for the plant, but gets denied, courtesy of the HE. Here come the nades. Molotov thrown into Squeaky, unbeknownst to Lucky, though no one's home. He's being funneled away from the site, leaving it up to Kenny with his orc, and he's going to get, get drilled instantly by Ooh. Crush. There's another 1D courtesy of Tony Black, delivered first class to Lucky. And now Chopper can watch the flank. Shox is walking straight into his crosshair. It's all deagles all day for Vega Squadron, and his post plant body and Jax really don't have a hope. Jax will be able to drop a weapon over to a teammate, which they'll sorely need. That money is pretty solid for the CT side, but it's not great. And actually, that's kind of a disaster. And then in, in the, that previous round, he had an up kill through the wall. So he really hasn't even gotten a chance until just now. Towards mid, he finds Crush. So now his kills can have some big impact. Body up top with the AUG. Gonna get pre-fired by Chopper, but not committing to the fight. All four players for Vega here. This is gonna end up here at the B-bomb site. It's certainly looking like it, especially as Crush died in Garage. They don't really have a two-pronged attack. It has to be way more one-dimensional. And G2, because their economy is in such a, a tight shape and they don't have that many grenades, they can't even afford to send a player to rotate round the back of Vega and look for information here. I love that play from Kenny. Oh, he gets picked off by JR, though. Nice shot. But finding the opening pick in mid and then rotating over towards the B bomb site. Not only that, but hunting down the frags. Getting aggressive in checkers. Now, I would imagine Tony Black is calling for his teammates to just chill and slow down. They didn't listen, if that's the case. Because <laughs> he had such a good position in mid. He could have chosen to apply pressure towards A. He could have tried to flank by going through connector. But those opportunities were squandered. Hutchie, the last one left in a one versus four. The name of the game now is just do damage to the defense. And G2 absolutely don't want to lose any more plays. They can salvage the AWP that was dropped from Kenny. With Lucky there with an AWP, you do not want him rotating into the bombsite with the AWP. But he'll have a chance to pick one off as they enter. Looks down, there it is. There's the frag. Smoke comes out late on top of Red Box. Some spam through the smoke from Body. But a nice trade from Tony Black. But still, they have to get that bomb off the ground. They have to get it planted quickly. Absolutely, try and draw out as many of those grenades as possible. That's a solid Molotov, it does stall them a little bit longer. And now the smokes are starting to clear. This is starting to get out of control for Vega Squadron. They only have one smoke to play with. This is why Tony Black is going so aggressive. But in doing so, it leaves Chopper vulnerable. Another Molotov, tossed to the back of the site. Tony Black will be able to plant this one safely. Well, a flashbang comes over. It's gonna take some heroics from Crusher, Tony Black, and there's the first crush into the forehead of Shocks, that flashbang. Actually destroying himself from Crusher's perspective. Now Tony Black still watching the tight angle. His teammate gets smoked off, but Crush still comes out swinging. Lands himself the frag onto Kenny. It's down to Jax. He's been playing very well so far for G2. And he can actually defuse around the corner. Crush is gonna have to go in for this one. He does have a kit, just about gets there in time. 
Here's that flashbang over mid, just as they're about to peek, and it's going to blind both of them, actually, and Shox can't recover in time, neither can Body. That is a decimating attack. This is why I love watching Vegas Squadron. They are so ruthless in their aggression. Simple but effective, right? Exactly. Yeah. Just good meat and potatoes. <laughs> Straight in there. You can't do it wrong. Of course, from a Britishman. Yeah. <laughs> that being said, G2. Two players down. Make it one. Kenny S is going to land the touchdown onto Crush. And not for the first time, Vega posturing outside of B. They have some nades coming in. Going to be looking to execute any second now. Jack's going to take the initiative, try and find himself some frags. Chop has been spotted. Wall bang to his demise in the head. But JR and Hutchie straight away will return fire. These Vega flashbangs are so good. I would love to see the flash stats when this game is all said and done because it feels like every time Vega's attacking a bomb site, they have at least one flashbang that just decimates somebody in a perfect position. JR with the peak. Didn't have any smokes, no utility. Chopper and Crush coming out mid, attacking up highway. You can see Shocks rotating over, but with the UMP, there's nothing he can do to watch mid. This this defense is actually so susceptible. Kenny has no idea it's coming in. He's gonna get taken out for free. He somehow gets a shot off, and it almost landed. UMP, but Shocks cannot handle any more than that. Lucky hasn't even been able to get involved in the action. He's gonna double him up though. They go for the plant way too early. Lucky's giving him a chance. It's a one on two for Body. That's unbelievable. They try and force the plant down and get in each other's way. It could be the determining factor, Body now. Three players with utility on the G2 side of things. That's going to make them very susceptible to aim punch to these USPs. And there's a pretty decent stack here. Two players committed. And this needs to be a win, but it's not. Tony Black can't handle it. Oh, and Body's got both entries. Lucky also wants to just shoulder peek and have a quick look and try and find information because Shox is on the prowl. He's making a move up highway. He is waiting, anticipating a player to be around the corner. Finds Crush, going to be going in for a second. Down goes Chopper, and this round surely will follow. JR has been given the chance at least to... Especially Hutchie, who's playing at forklift. Ooh, speaking of which, he goes out looking one too many times and gets punished. Tony Black flash into Molotov, going to use his smoke just to keep himself alive for a little while longer. And JR, he is going to be gift wrapped that kill, nearly got a double. Tony Black comes in for that second one. They just run in a straight line, 20 seconds left. And G2 need to go and salvage this bomb, which is in a horrible spot. Lucky's going to alleviate the pressure before he gets plucked out. And more damage is inflicted to Shox as he tries to cross. Eight seconds to go. Bomb does get planted, but now it's a one on two. Albeit with Vega, both players very low HP. Jax, Taylor made in right position to clutch this one in the post-plant situation. They don't have a kit, as I mentioned earlier, and they don't have grenades. This actually should be Jax's round. That reposition is so sick for Forklift. Yeah, this is exactly, it should be. I don't think he realizes one's in the site, but without the kit, I don't know if this is even possible. It goes for the peak, he needs the kill immediately. He's got it. Oh, I think JR just pulled one out of the hat. Oh, tapping away with the AUG doesn't complete the kill, and they're already looking up highway. Tony Black's not ready for that. The player and connector couldn't call it out fast enough. He didn't spot them running along that wall. And this is great for G2, good trade. Crush. Needs to hold the line. HP is so low on Kenny and Lucky, but it won't matter. Somehow G2 get away with this round and a great finish from Lucky. Thought Kenny was going to pull the trigger there and throw the smoke into CT side. And they'd start to get this ball rolling, but they are definitely running scarce on time now. 30 seconds left. Now the smoke starts to come in. Now the Molotovs get tossed into B. There was a third player here earlier, but he's rotated away and he's not coming back. A lot rests on this. That's a nice angle to take some attention away from Tony Black. But the Molotov, he's got to smoke it off. So they now know one's in vents. All that's left is to open up this bomb site, crush everything to do. He finds one. It's a blind Jax. There goes Tony Black, though. And there comes the reinforcements. That headshot. Crush able to handle it so well. And as you mentioned, the time's so low. No chance for recovery in this round for G2, but. Taking some weapons, taking some economy away is shock. Now that could actually bait them into a false sense of security. Thinking I, that's now clear. No, they know he's there still. That's a great peek from Tony Black, but Jax is just able to land the shot a little bit faster. The dink is down, he's very, very hurt. And Vega doesn't have to worry about the B bomb site at all with Chopper in this position. The question becomes now, 
Does G2 clear this? Do they hard clear this angle? Do they realize his position? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, that's uncomfortable. Great damage done, but his teammates are so far away. G2 is still gonna be able to get into this bomb site before they rotate over. Crush up top. He's got two players very low. Lucky's got a cross with the bomb. There's a chance, and there it is. Almost pre-fire. Molotov to follow up as well means that bomb. Salvaging it, picking it up by Kenny, still deals a decent amount of damage. And it's planted in an awkward position as well. It's not planted for Jax. Yes, he can get himself round to Checkers, but he's gonna have to dust himself through the smoke first. Jax has done a bunch of damage to JR. This surely still, though, in the hands of Vega Squadron. They've used all of their utility. They're gonna have to come out and face Kenny at some point, and he's gonna look to deliver. There's the first frag spinning around, get the second. Oh, and picked up the third as well. G2 take the lead off the back of Kenny's beautiful play with the AK-47. Side arms, oh, everything and, you could ask for. And now they're playing mid, Vince, although they're going for a reverse boost. This is what they did in the previous round, and look at G2. They just back away. They are so ready for this. And even the Molotov tagging Tony Black, that's going to convince them to drop because that is a sound cue that they don't want to mess with. Now, how do you fall back in this kind of a situation? You don't. You get taken out. That is a big frag, a big follow-up as well for Tony Black. Into a three-on-three -three we go. Rightfully so. He's been one of their... Standout players, perfect timing. And now they know exactly where G2 are. These two A defenders are gonna go over here as soon as they possibly can. JR's gonna try and hold the line for dear life. Misses out on the flick. And it's gonna all come down to a two on two. Hutchie Crush versus Shocks and Lucky. That's an aggressive play for JR. Could not buy enough time. They've gotta wait for that smoke to fade. One flashbang to work with. Although for the moment, Lucky is pretty spread out from Shox. And this is a nice reposition from Shox as well. Let him think there's someone in the bomb site. Grab a new angle. They could actually double stack this one. Shox is gonna get traded out by Crush. And he doesn't even get tagged that hard either. He's got himself a kit, but he's gonna have to just go straight in for this one because time is scarce. Lucky is waiting, pondering. The bomb is planted for him, lands the headshot, and G2 get over the finish line. 16-14, and Vega, that's gonna be a bitter pill to swallow.